The National Human Rights Commission has released its minimum standard human rights guidelines for the treatment of COVID-19 patients across the country. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Anthony Ojuku, while unveiling the guidelines to newsmen in Abuja, said the guidelines will ensure COVID-19 treatment centers operate at international standards. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken its toll on the enjoyment of human rights, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. There have been restrictions put in place by governments at both the national and state levels, which huge impact on socioeconomic well-being of the people. The standard minimum guidelines for the human rights of COVID-19 patients in treatment centers in Nigeria is a policy instrument and recommendation made by the National Human Rights Commission to the government and health authorities for the mainstreaming of human rights guarantees into the treatment process of COVID-19 patients in Nigeria. The guidelines contain human rights guarantees such as the right to life, health, dignity, privacy, religion, protection from discrimination of COVID-19 patients. It also contains provisions aimed at ensuring access to adequate accommodation, food, water, and sanitation by patients at the treatment centers, as well as social protection for vulnerable groups like women, children, persons with disabilities, older persons, people with mental health challenges, and so on. Joining us via Skype is lawyer and political strategist Charles Omole. Good afternoon, Mr. Omole, and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. How possible is it that we are having a conversation bordering on extrajudicial killings and human rights abuses, even with the ravaging coronavirus? Well, I mean, the challenge we face with extrajudicial killing in Nigeria is, uh, I think, shows a systemic problem. Because if you look at the reports of the National Human Rights Commission, uh, all the practically all the uh, para paramilitary and uh, po policing agencies were indicted. Police, you know, were, were, were indicted. You know, civil defense. You know, uh, the army were indicted. Even the state. Um, task force, uh, you know, uh, pe uh, people put together by governors were also indicted. So it shows that uh, it's not just a police problem. It's a pol it's anybody in authority in Nigeria uh, just seems to have this penchant for abuse of that power. And uh, for me, there are, there are four key reasons why that is the case. The UN warned before now that world leaders will be careful to tread with caution during this period to avoid such abuses. What sort of orientation is our leadership missing? Well, I think um, when we talk about our leadership, because you have to understand here, we have to lay, I mean, there is a, there is a strategic uh, a, a, a fault that lies with overall leadership, uh, regardless of which party is in power. But the real culprit here really are the individual officers, you know, uh, involved in this. And like I said, there are several reasons why that is the case. Number one, for example, is poor training. You know, uh, uh, all our, you know, uh, civil, uh, you know, uh, policing agencies are poorly trained. Uh, you know, poor weapon training, you know, uh, poor uh, training in terms of uh, how to handle, uh, how to de-escalate situations, so to speak. You know, uh, uh, these, these, are, you know these, these are ongoing training that is missing. Then also you have a lack of effective, uh, what I call defensive equipment. That's the second problem. You know, less than 2% of our police, for example, have bulletproof vests, for example. So the gun that is given to them that's supposed to be purely an offensive weapon is now used for both offense and defense. So that there's the increased use of firearms needlessly there. Of course, the third reason is, uh, you know, what I call um, poor accountability system and mechanism. The, for example, the best practice all over the world is that if somebody in a paramilitary agency, the police, sh you know, is involved in a shooting, the first thing you do is you take, you take away their weapon, you put them on desk duty, and you investigate that shooting, whether it's good or bad shooting. Good shooting is considered a shooting that follows 
the uh, the protocol and the rules of engagement. You know, and bad shooting, of course, is the one that contravenes that. And so until that determination is made, that officer is going to be on desk duty. You know, but in Nigeria, a police officer could shoot somebody today and you see him tomorrow back on the street. You know, I must say, under the current IG, it is getting better because more police officers have been sort of held account to many of their abuses. But uh, it's a long way to go. There's a lot of reorientation and retraining needed. And, of course, last, uh, the last you know, uh, cause of this is what I call impunity uh, that is caused by corruption. Because when all these officers go around collecting little money all over the place, they, they do, you know, it is true, not in all cases, but in many cases, they deliver back to their bosses back at the station. So telling a police officer on the street, I'm going to report you to your DPO, is no longer a deterrence because the DPO is in on it. So, 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 so the impunity uh, culture has developed. So that is why you are seeing police, civil defense, you know, task force, and everybody killing Nigerians. There have also been pockets of reports indicating extorting of Nigerians by security agencies manning the roads. Isn't this a show of corruption that should not be tolerated at all levels at all? Look, listen, you know, um, you know, I have various links to the police. You know, I mean, if you check my WhatsApp message, half of them are from senior police officers on a daily basis. You know, I mean, that, that was uh, someone who told me just yesterday that uh, he heard the police officer say, if you cannot build a house out of this corona by, uh, lockdown, you'll never be able to make money to build a house as a police officer. So, I mean, that is, that's, that, that's a joke. So they are extorting. That is, there's no, there's no uh, other way to say it. You know, but like I said, the current police leadership, they are doing better than their predecessors. But they have a long way to go in convincing Nigerians and making it more open and transparent. Now the police uh, complaints response unit, they, a bit, they are a lot more responsive than they've been, ever been, in, in, my, in my own, in my own uh, assessment. They are doing better. But, you know, culture that has taken 30 years to build cannot be removed in 30 days. So but, it's, that's an ongoing uh, you know, uh, re-education and retraining and reskilling of these police officers. Now, Mr. Molly, the House requested Buhari to direct heads of security agencies implicated in the human rights abuses and extrajudicial killings to immediately fish out the perpetrators for prosecution and punishment according to the law. Are you confident that cases as this will not be swept under the carpet? Well, I mean, if you're asking me if I can bet my house on it, the answer is no. I mean, uh, you know, the House can, can say what they like in that sense, but I, 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 I probably would say it's going to be a mixed picture. Some people will be held account, others will not. And ironically, the challenge is now that unless you have what I call ironclad evidence, uh, the default of many of these paramilitary of these uh, security agencies is, to, uh, is not to do anything. So you've got to have videos, audios, pictures, stuff like that. You know, uh, and so cases that have such ironclad evidence, I'm sure they will do something about. But others, that is just a matter of report, word of mouth report, no clear evidence in that sense, uh, most likely they will probably sweep those ones under the, on, under, the, uh, under the sheets, yes. Finally, what policies or strategies should we adopt as a nation to see a reduction in issues as these, or a total stop to issues of um, human rights abuses? Well, by, I mean, especially by, by agency, you know, our security agencies. Yes, I mean, one thing I've always known in, uh, uh, you know, that is always clear that any Nigerians know is that Nigerians always respond more to deterrence than anything else. We saw during the first uh, regime of uh, Buhari when uh, we started this war against indiscipline and crossing the express was, was made a, you know, uh, a crime, or more or less, Nigerians complied. You know, when this, because of deterrence. So what actually needs to happen here is these security agencies need to not only discipline their officers, they need to do it speedily, transparently, and report it. When people are seeing several officers being dismissed or disciplined for these things, it will, the message will go around to all the other officers that, okay, this is no longer a joke. So until we see more visible, the, the IG team are doing well, but they need to ramp it up. They need to be more visible. They need to be more speedy. In their, you know, in their responses, make examples of officers that breach the rules. And as you do that, the rest will get the message. Dr. Charles Oboli, it's been a pleasure having you join us on News of the Hour. Thanks for having me.